Hello everyone and welcome back to another InDesign tutorial. Two voice levers of white showing on your finished product. Today we will set up leads and slugs in our document. When designing, consider whether elements run off the page or not. To accommodate these bleeds, if images are being used in the layout, they need to be a tad bigger to accommodate the bleed area, or else potentially face a problem with the file. Let's create a new document. In the main menu, File, New, or the keyboard shortcut is Command N for a Mac or Control N for a PC. Pick a size. It is the same setup for any document size. If you have created the document before this video, you can still add a bleed and slug to the file. Just go to the main menu, File, Document Setup. Scroll down until you see Bleed and Slug. The first is a slug. The slug is often used to list the file names, dates, notes, registration marks, and other pertinent information that is outside the printing and bleed areas. Most of the time, I leave this at zero and let the printers determine the measurements on their own or ask what they prefer. With bleeds, artwork or type extends beyond the document's actual dimensions. For instance, when a poster goes to press, it has a bleed on all four sides. Your layer's background, colors, and image should cover the entire bleed area. In general, bleed should be at least one eighth of an inch or 0.125 an inch, and accounts for all sides of the page that allows it. This red line represents what is called a bleed, which means that any graphic, text, or color that is extended into the bleed area will be trimmed off. Where the white meets the gray, that's the actual page edge. At the moment, there is no bleed on this document. Our pages are still the same size, but we are adding a bleed so the commercial prints will be able to trim them down without leaving a sliver of white. I'll keep it simple here and use this image as our guide. Sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. In case you didn't notice, my photo is sized correctly. I made sure my image was saved a quarter inch bigger for the width and height with a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. This way, I prevent any pixelation or fuzziness that may be occur if I try to force the size. Which looks better, the one on the left that was saved correctly before I started this video, or the one on the right that is resized to the bleed marks. Let's place this image right up against the red line in the upper left or hand corner. To get the bleed, we must extend the image to the bottom right hand corner. In most cases, a printing company may have their own set of PDF preset for the printers, but for this tutorial, we'll use the press quality preset. This file will be exported in the main menu, File, Export, and Save Without Marks, so what it would look like in Acrobat. Let's create another one with all the printer marks, such as bleeds and crop marks. Let's open both of them now. The trim marks are now visible in Acrobat when you open the file, and the one with no trim marks or bleeds could be an issue when we cut the page to size. In essence, any element or graph that extends into the bleed area will be trimmed, so there won't be a sliver of white showing such as the one shown here. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please like it and subscribe to get more tips and tricks. Thanks for watching.